this video, I'm going to show you how to draw a cat with colored pencils. If you are a member of my Patreon, the full real-time version of this tutorial, as well as the reference photo, color sheet, and materials list is available on both tiers that I offer, as well as many other 1-15 to hour real-time tutorials that you can follow along with and learn to draw wildlife and pets. I will have a link to my Patreon in the video description. So I'm starting off by using a light cream color by going over that with a, um, I can't remember off the top of my head what the color was, but it's kind of a um, darker yellow. I believe it's like Naples yellow. And that gave me a good color for the eye on the right because that eye is a little more in this shadow. And so it's a little bit darker. The eye on the left was kind of more cast in the light that is on this cat. So I wanted that to be lighter. Now I'm starting off with the base layer and for the base layer of this cat, this is kind of a key critical layer to try and get at least mostly accurate. I mean, you don't have to be perfect with your base layers. Oftentimes with when you're drawing um, lighter colored animals, not that this cat is like super light or anything, but it is like in the spectrum of light and dark, it's kind of in the mid-tones spectrum and trying to judge your values on a subject of this kind of color can be a little bit more of a challenge. So as you progress further with your drawing, you've got your, or what you think is a good base layer down. And then when you come back to it later after you've done some more work on it, you realize that your base layer didn't really add up to what it should be. And your base layer is really, really critical to try and get accurate because when you're drawing fur, it's really going to help you build the fur much, much easier. If you can get your base layer pretty, pretty accurate to what it should be for your drawing, then you coming back through later, you're gonna have to do less work to get the results that you want. You won't have to do as many layers. Oftentimes other artists will just stick with kind of uh, burnish blending and using a bunch of strokes for their drawings to build that fur structure and they don't get an adequate base layer in there. So then you're left with constantly re-going over your fur layers as you progress and that just takes so much more time. Now with this cat, um, Oftentimes, depending on what you're doing for your base layers, you can try to add some other colors in there to help yourself out to get the actual color of the highlights that you're seeing in the fur. But then you'll try to lightly put a layer on there and you end up putting it on there heavier than what you wanted. But the great thing about building your base layers is you're just trying to get colors and, and trying to avoid pencil strokes. So it's really, really easy to correct any mistakes you made by adding too much colors. So what you saw me do there is that I made a mistake. I added a little bit too much of my, um, it was called Def Blue, which is kind of a purpley blue color, and I got a little bit too much on there. And what I thought what I was applying was a really light layer, but I had added just a little bit too much. When you're working with colored pencils, um, less is more. You don't always need as much as you might originally think you need. A super, super light coat may give you the ultimate kind of color balance that you need to add to your drawing, whereas you add maybe two layers of that and it's too much. So it's always better to add your layers in slow increments and don't go too far and add too much all at once because then you're gonna spend more time trying to correct the, the addition of too many layers rather than if you had just gone slow in the first place, you would have ended up spending less time trying to do what you were trying to do in the first place. Now, I do want to say though that we all make mistakes and we're not perfect with trying to get our drawings right. A lot of us, even us experienced artists, we're not perfect every time we go to sit down to draw and we make mistakes and we don't do things the way maybe we did the last two times. You know, it's things vary from day to day. Now I've got the base layer pretty accurate. I blended it with odorless mineral spirits. And of course I erased off a little bit of the top layer so that I could take down the purple values, which honestly though, at the end of this drawing, I believe I could have left the purple the way it was. I think it would have worked out just fine for the cat. It wouldn't have been too much, but at the moment of 
deciding it was too much, I just decided to erase it and you know, it worked out fine. You don't have to do everything an exact particular way for things to work out with your drawings. There's lots of different ways to do things. But for starting this first um, layer of fur, this is going to be kind of the um, first mid-tone layer. I like to think of fur as you're building a bunch of uh, different tonal layers to the fur because fur is, you want it to be like fur. You don't want to build straw and straw would be just making a bunch of random pencil strokes and thinly sparsing them and not using enough variety in your values. So I'm using kind of a mid-tone um, cold gray for this cat. And with this cat, um, not that you can see the reference photo, the reference photo is available over on Patreon, but um, this cat, I didn't exactly have the immediate colors in my set to um, get the, the accurate representation of the color. And the color of the animals that you draw doesn't matter so much. What's more important is trying to get the values. So I decided to just not worry so much about trying to get the perfect color representation to what I was seeing in the reference photo and just go with the colors that I had and try to get the right values. So I ended up picking a warm gray to kind of mix in with this cat when originally I probably wouldn't have picked that just looking at the reference photo. There was way more cool colors going on than there were warm colors. However, because the, the warm gray is so subtle, it didn't hugely negatively impact the drawing. And when you're making your drawings, that is something that you can make decisions to do is that what's going to matter the most are your values. Go ahead and sacrifice that color a little bit. But in the instance that you're working on maybe a pet portrait for somebody's specific pet, then, you know, color kind of matters a little bit more. I mean, it's okay if you're off, but you don't want to be significantly off. And if I was trying to do this as a pet portrait for somebody, I would have taken more time to try and do this. But instead, this is a tutorial to learn how to draw fur in kind of pet portrait style. So I didn't spend as much time trying to work on color. If I had tried to work on color, I would have spent more time trying to get my base layer accurate. And I would have spent more time adding more fur layers than I did. I think I added at least three or four fur layers. I added the, not including the base layer. So I added the mid-tone layer. I went over it again with another mid-tone. And then I went over that with the first shade of kind of the shadow layers. And then I went over it after that to add in the final shadows, the, the, um, the darkest portions of the fur. And it's important when you're drawing fur to draw it in these kind of steps because there is a whole lot of overlapping of fur. You don't want to have sparse looking fur and especially fur that is very, very uniform in the strokes that you're drawing. Uh, if you'll notice kind of these more close up angles of the cat is that all of my little hair strokes, they're not all perfectly straight lines. They taper maybe to the right a tiny bit or to the left a tiny bit and they crisscross each other. And this really is kind of the key to drawing fur is try not to make it uniform because fur never is uniform. And then the other aspect to drawing realistic fur is that um, it has a lot of clumping going on. So where there is one or two hairs, usually there's always three or four, maybe five others entangled and touching those other hairs. They, they clump together. And then there's also, that's kind of your smaller aspect of clumping, but then there's other larger sections. So you have sections of fur that may be kind of like half dime sized and they all kind of shift off from the um, animal and come out into the air a little bit and go in a specific direction. And then everything around that is oftentimes has shadows in it because that section of fur is clumped and it's coming away from the subject in one way or another. And it's important that as you're drawing fur, you want to try and build those structures. So now you see me using my black pencil and I've already added kind of the first two layers of the mid-tonal values. So now I'm adding kind of the first layer of that 
black in there for the first set of shadows. And for the first set of shadows, I'm not really worried about trying to get individual hair strokes. I think that one of the biggest mistakes that people tend to make with drawing their fur is trying to draw a bunch of individual strokes and they end up with fur that comes out looking like straw. It doesn't look real at all. So you wanna try and avoid drawing straw and try to just focus on drawing shapes. Fur is a bunch of shapes. Essentially, you're mostly drawing shadows in the fur. You're not actually drawing the hairs itself. So with this ear, there's a little bit of illumination going on from behind it. So it kind of had a little bit of a pinky color to it, not a whole lot. So I did take a little bit of a sanguine there and added a little bit of color in there. Although I don't really think it was absolutely necessary. And then for most of the lighter areas of this cat, I mean, I had my base layer pretty good, but then I came back through later and kind of readjusted my base layer once I got a better ratio of having the values done in the fur layers. And so I decided to come back through and kind of darken it a little bit. I used my cool gray too for that to add over the top of it. And when I was applying it over the top, I was very meticulous about where I was putting it. I mean. I'm using Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils. These are oil-based colored pencils, and so they're a little more translucent than your other brands of colored pencils that may be wax-based. Wax-based are more opaque, so you're not going to see through your layers as much as you would with an oil-based pencil. So in a way, oil-based pencils can work really great for you in building fur because if you kind of um, judged your values inaccurately, and got your base layer not so great and you need to go over it later and you've already added some of your dark layers in there, then you don't have to be so super meticulous about applying your pencil into it to try and get it absolutely perfect and not cover up your darks. But essentially I did try to be somewhat meticulous but I don't have to be absolutely perfect because going over it with that lighter color doesn't cover up my darks enough to um, negatively impact them. As I'm working into the fur that is lower down on the cat, this is not the focal point of my drawing. So I don't want to make a bunch of individual hair strokes down there. I want to use more of the side of the pencil and kind of create um, really broad strokes that are thick and more of uh, shapes instead of individual hairs. If I were to do individual hairs down there, you know, I could if I wanted to do more detail, but I usually with my style of drawing, I try to focus all of my detail in the focal points and taper off and do less detail as I work further away from the focal point. And this way it saves me time with drawing as well as with my typical artwork, it's going to draw my viewers into my focal points. When you're blending with odorless mineral spirits on Bristol vellum paper, that is the paper that I am using, um, it's kind of got less tooth than your medium textured papers. And so if you try to apply a heavier layer on there and then try to blend it with odorless mineral spirits, um, different colors kind of blend just a little bit differently. Not a whole lot of difference, but they do. And you'll try to blend a heavier layer and what you'll end up doing is just slopping it around and it kind of pushes it around unevenly. And that can be kind of frustrating. So when you're blending and you do a heavier layer because you're trying to save time to just get it done faster, you want to try and blend and be very careful about how much pressure you're applying with your brush to your paper. And then of course you also want to use less solvent. The, le the least amount of solvent that you, you possibly could, but you're still going to get a result with blending. You'll know when you're not getting a result because you'll be sitting there trying to blend it and, and touching the paper with your brush and nothing's changing. That's when you need more solvent, but you want to apply the least amount of pressure and use the least amount of solvent as you can to get a nice, even and soft blend. And then of course, I typically like to use multiple brushes. I use some stiffer um, gold Taclon brushes when I'm blending fur because those brushes have a tendency to push around the pigments more than they do blend it smooth. I don't want to always blend 
everything perfectly smooth, especially when I'm working with fur. Now I'm kind of working on the last final touch up layers on this cat. Um, I have blended most of it except for, you know, right at this point, I'm trying to just get the, the, uh, specific little details in. So I'm touching up on the shadows and I'm also touching up a little bit on the highlights, trying to get these values to be accurate. And for drawing the whiskers, um, you know, with color pencils, you do have to try and reserve the whites of the paper. I mean, you can go over it with a white colored pencil later, but it's just not going to show up very well over darker colors. You do need to try and save the whites. And so as you're going through your drawing process, you have to just be a little extra careful about that so that you don't mess them up and cover them up with darker colors. So I'm taking my white colored pencil and I'm just kind of going around the lighter areas of the cat and trying to kind of soften out the grays that I had added. I added that cool gray over the top of it and there were kind of some heavier stroke marks in there and on the reference photo there really is, it's almost like a smooth highlight. There's no indication of fur in some areas. So I'm taking my white and applying quite a bit of pressure to soften those out and of course maintain the highlights. You can learn more colored pencil tips from the top right video. And you can also learn to draw wildlife and pets with colored pencils from my real time one to 15 hour drawing tutorials with a voiceover of tips and explanations over on my Patreon. Signing up gives you instant access to a growing library of tutorials and new ones are added each month. I'll have a link in the video description. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.